Welcome and thank you for joining today's webinar on using SAP GTS for smooth export legal control. During our presentation, we will go over the legal control functionality in SAP GTS, review a specific export license scenario, and simulate a business transaction in the compliance results in SAP GTS. Today's speaker is Saravana Kumar, an SAP GTS and BW consultant here at Crypt. Saravana is a seasoned consultant with years of experience in GTS, working with compliance, SPL screening, and product classification, as well as with BW reporting and dashboards. On the next slide, I will go over some quick housekeeping tips. If questions come up during the webinar, please type them into the panel as shown in the example. We'll be addressing them at the end of the presentation. And if we run out of time and don't get to your question, we'll be sure to follow up with you after the webinar. On the next slide, I'd like to quickly introduce Crypt for those of you who are less familiar with us. Crypt was established in 2008 and is a leading SAP consulting partner. Although we operate globally, we consider ourselves a boutique consulting firm that lives by our founding principles of innovation, collaboration, and drive. These principles have allowed us to complete over 800,000 SAP consulting hours in various industries. One of our services focus around implementations, upgrades, and customizations for various SAP solutions, including trade, transportation, warehouse, planning, IVP, and HANA. We also offer proprietary solutions, integration services, and work closely with SAP for ramp ups and testing. On the next slide, I'd like to share some of our thought leadership. We strive to be thought leaders in the supply chain ecosystem, and we've accomplished this by authoring books in addition to writing blogs and white papers, which are available on our website. Moving on to the next slide. This is an overview of our proprietary offerings, which complements the SAP suite. I wanted to briefly highlight Crypt Connect located in the middle of the solution list. This particular solution can be integrated with non-SAP ERP systems, which many people find valuable. Moving on to the next slide. Over the years, we've had the opportunity to work with a variety of companies within the SAP supply chain space, and some of them are highlighted here. And with that, I'll pass it over to Saravana. Thank you, Rachel. Good morning, everyone. Uh, today, I'm here to talk on use, using SAP GTS for smooth export legal control. Um, <clears throat> this is our agenda for today's session. We'll, we'll see some of the terms here in the introduction. Uh, what is export? Export in global trade means sending of goods or services produced in one country to another country. So here the seller is referred as an exporter and the foreign buyer is referred as an importer. So whenever there's an export or import, there will be a involvement from customs authorities. So export of any country can be distinguished as export of domestic goods and export of foreign goods. The export of foreign goods is generally referred as re-exports. What is re-export? Re-export is when the item is imported from a foreign country and then re-exported within the current country or to a different country. For example, if your item requires a license to export from US to a specific country, then the same item requires a license to be re-exported from the non-US country to the same country within the same country or to a different country. So your re-export is subject to EAR if item is of US origin, wherever the item is located. So this applies for your finished goods or parts or components that are used to make a finished goods. So we have a rule called de minimis rule. As per this rule, which, which is defined by AR, if US control content, US control content is less than 25% of value in the finished product, then your product is not subject to AR. Uh, so in order to identify whether you need a uh, license, a re-export license, you have to see the US control content in the particular finished product. Few, com few countries like uh, North Korea, Cuba, Syria, Sudan, Iran, the percentage is less. The percentage is 10 percentage. Below that, there is no requirement of EAR for the re-export. 
what's deemed export deemed export is when you're releasing the control technology or information to a non-us person regardless of wherever the export takes place the non-us person in the uh, in terms of uh, you can say a foreign company a foreign national foreign government entity foreign military or anyone who is not legally considered a us person so mostly companies involved in aerospace, defense, electronics, semiconductors, software, energy, uh, manufacturing companies, uh, even some universities require this deemed export license. So all companies, if, uh, if they have the control technology, whether it is EAR or ITAR, must ensure to check for the deemed export license. So these are two important export control laws in US, EAR and ITAR. So EAR is from the Department of Commerce, BAS, and ITAR is from the Department of State, DTDC. Oh. And uh, we'll see both these uh, departments later in the coming slides. And what is export control? Export control typically refers to regulations which are set by several federal agencies, especially the Department of State, Commerce, Treasury, in order to protect the national security, promote the foreign policy, and mainly to control the short supplies. So here comes the Export Control Act. So this act was actually introduced by US government uh, in 1940, uh, before the World War II, to avoid the scarcity of critical commodities and to limit the export of materials to other countries. So export control management in terms of GTS, if you say, uh, in terms of GTS, it refers to automating and automating the determination of export license and assignment of license to your business transactions. So uh, with this, we can check all the business transactions under export control law, law what, whatever legal regulations, applicable re legal regulations, and even we can track the quantity and the value of the license uh, about the depreciation and uh, we can have our own customized report to monitor the license. Uh, we can have a license monitor report. And um, there's a program called uh, Export Management Compliance Program. So companies, a few companies implement this program to ensure they comply with the export control policy for their dual use commodities, software technology. So what is export license? So uh, export license grants permissions to conduct a certain type of export transaction, say a specific quantity or value of a commodity to a specific country or to a specific person. Whether we need a license to export uh, for all the items, whether we need a license, we need to see. So most, mostly, uh, most of the items exported to a foreign buyer does not require an export license, but all the light items are subject to, to export control laws and re regulations. So first thing is we need to search the item in the commerce control list uh, and or the USML list. There are two export control laws in US, as I said before. So there are two lists managed by these departments. CCL list and use the USML list. So we need to find out from this list whether you need an export license for your product. So this export license are issued for individual transactions determined by the product classification, the destination country, or the end use, or, or based on the end user. Uh, so exporters should learn which federal department or agency has control over the item you, you have for the export uh, to find out if a license is required or not. Uh, so what is dual use export license? So dual use export license for items which are being used in both commercial and military applications. So for national security and foreign policy reason, US maintains some controls on sa controls and sanctions on the export and re-export of US origin goods and technology to wherever you ship across the world. 
So each agency maintains its own regulations here. So these are uh, some important regulatory bodies. The first one, Department of Commerce, BAS. Uh, so which controls your dual use commodities, uh, information technology, and uh, uh, we have a commerce control list from this department and we'll be having the ECC and product classification number. And the second one is the Department of State and this is mainly for uh, defense related materials, articles, mainly ITAR uh, is a legal regulation here and we'll be having the USA, USML category, just like with the ECC and number. Uh, we'll be classifying the items which are related to ITAR. Apart from that, we have OFAC, CBP, DEA, EPA, DOE, NRC, FDA codes we have, and DHS, US Census Bureau, Patent and Trademark Office, Maritime Administration, Agriculture Department, Fish and Wildlife Service. These are some of the important regulatory bodies. And this is some of the multilateral export control regime. The multilateral export control regime is an international body for organizing the national export control system. So there, there are four uh, different control regimes here. If you read the Vesena arrangement is for the control of conventional arms and dual use goods and technologies. Nuclear supplier group is to for the control of nuclear related technology. Australia group is for control of chemical and biological technology that could be weaponized. The missile, missile technology control regime for the control of rockets, other aerial vehicles, which are capable of delivering weapons of mass destruction. So these are uh, some of the uh, key challenges in uh, international trade, international laws, security risk, national laws, department laws, embargoes, reduce buffer stock business partners. So licensing is one of the uh, key challenge here. Uh, we should comply with the export control laws here, national laws. Product classification. So classifying a product for export control is the first and most important task. Uh, so ECCN consists of five character alpha and numeric characters. Uh, so which identifies the technology level and capabilities of an item. So there are 10 broad categories subdivided into five product groups. So if you see here, 3A001, 3 stands for the broad category and A, the product group. And uh, third digit, 0 stands for the control reason. And then 0 stands for the multilateral or unilateral concern. And the last digit is for the sequential number. So these, these are the types of control. Zero stands for national security reasons. And uh, zero to eight is a multilateral concern and nine is a unilateral concern. So what are the steps to obtain ECCN? ECCN or USML? So first, if you're not unsure about uh, the product classification, whether the product is listed or uh, coming under different agency, control under different agency. First, we need to search the commodity in USML list where we can, uh, that is the ITAR search. We can search in ITAR to find out whether we can, our item is listed in USML list. If, if it is not listed, then we can move to EAR. Uh, that is ECCN. We can search in the CCL list, which is commerce control list. So these are the steps to obtain the ECC. And first thing is a uh, uh, first step is we can self classify. Self classify is a yours are responsible for determining your product classification. So for doing this, you should have a technical, good technical understanding of your item, familiarity with the structure and format of the commerce control list. So if you have all the required knowledge uh, to classify correctly, we can do self classify then or we can request an official classification from BAS, from the Department of Commerce. 
So for this, we have to uh, we can do this online through simplified network application process redesign, which is Snap or online is available in uh, BA with BIS. We can request an official classification from the department itself through online, or we can ask the manufacturer. But we should verify. Uh, so if, if manufacturer, if if you have taken your item from different vendor, and uh, if they have exported the item in the past, the manufacturer should be having the ECCN number with them. So you can ask the manufacturer about the ECCN number, but later we should verify whether that ECCN is up to date and correct. So mostly this ECCN content and USML content uh, we will take from the content providers. There are some uh, content providers. So we'll take the uh, content as a XML file and we will load it in SAP GT system and then we'll do the product classification. So these are the steps uh, for applying the export license. So you have an item for export. First thing is we are searching that particular item is listed in CCL, Commerce Control List. If the item is listed in CCL, you find the ECC number of an item. Okay, and uh, the reason uh, for control based on the destination country, party, and technical parameters. Um, if the item is not listed, uh, you can classify it as the AR double nine, which is no license required, NLR license, and you can ship the product, you can complete the transaction. Even if the item is not listed in CCL and you are shipping the product to an embargo country or to a SPL party uh, or prohibited end use, in that case, you should apply for export license. So these are some of the penalties if you violate the uh, export control law, export compliance violations, costly fines, penalties, tarnished reputation, imprisonment, loss of trade privilege, loss of credibility. So these are some of the uh, penalties and violations listed in BAS website. Uh, so mostly exporters never plan on doing something wrong purposefully in their export transaction, but sometimes mistakes happen and uh, the outcomes you see uh, will be devastating. So companies, uh, they face a huge fines, they lose the trade privilege, uh, they, most cases they go to jail. Uh, so if the regulations are not followed, uh, they can be penalized. Even individuals at all levels may, even it is a, uh, is a CEO, CFO, whoever it is, they can be penalized with fines and imprisonment. So if you see here a Chinese company violating export, uh, sending shipment to Iran, North Korea, fined $1.1 billion penalty, 40 months imprisonment to a Singapore man for violating exports to uh, Iran and Iran sending the US components. And even uh, recently a Chinese, Chinese based telecom company CFO was arrested in Canada and extradited to US for shipping US origin products to Iran and other countries, which is against uh, US export and sanction laws. So these are the, some of the benefits you have proper legal control in place. You can improve your margin, you can secure your uh, corporate brand equity, accelerate cross-border transaction, increase efficiency, avoid costly fines and penalties, uh, be prepared for the legal audits, uh, reduce risk of non-compliance, can manage your license effectively, can do a doc, legal control check, you can release the block documents. Uh, if there's a block in the customs document, you can release it in GTS after having a proper license in place. And embargo, you can do shipment to embargo country if you have a license. So this is a system requirement. Um, you should have RFC connection between uh, uh, ERP and GTS system. So it's a GTS plugin. Uh, SLLPA uh, will be set up in ERP system. And uh, uh, as Rachel mentioned about our product Crypt Connect, we do have our product Crypt Connect, which will help you to uh, connect a non SAP system with the GSP GTS system. So, for legal control check, these are the requirements. Uh, this we have to do it in system so that we can have proper legal control in place. Product should be rightly classified first in GTS, licensed. Uh, granted by the department or the federal agency, 
and it should be updated in SAP GTS, and we should have a license determination strategy maintained in SAP GTS. And we'll, we'll see a scenario here. We'll create a sales order in ECC. Uh, so for each sales order, a customs document will be created in GTS and uh, compliance check will be performed. Uh, in compliance, uh, we have SPL, embargo, uh, EHS, uh, letter of credit, uh, legal control. So for legal control, license will be checked here. So here the customs document will be blocked for the license uh, for the uh, legal control. There'll be a block. So we'll create a license and uh, we'll recheck the document to release the block in GTS. This is the flow. We'll create a sales order in FIDA system, which is a ERP system. Uh, document is blocked to, due to legal control. Analyze the reason uh, by going to the customs document in GTS. You can see the log. I can see the reason why it got blocked. And license is not there in system. You enter the license detail in GTS and recheck the document. That's uh, That will release the block. A uh, few cases, uh, the doc technically incomplete. Uh, in that case, you have to complete the document for whatever reason it is incomplete. And then uh, the compliance check will be performed. So in this screen, you're seeing a legal uh, control block. The sales order is created. When there is a block, you'll get to see a pop-up. Uh, if there is no block, you'll not see any pop-up. So here the customs document is blocked and there's no block for embargo on SPL, legal control is blocked and, uh, and it is blocked for license. You can see that in brackets. So uh, if you see the log in uh, SAP GTS in the customs document, uh, the legal regulation is checked here. Uh, there's a block in legal control. The legal regulation is EAR US and the country is CN. So the, uh, yeah, the shipment is from US to China. Uh, and uh, determination procedure is there and uh, import license type IVL uh, is detected and the selection criteria is shown below status with active status and with this FTO product ECC and number and country of destination. So country of departure or destination departure is for your import transaction and destination is for your export. If the destination is China. So with this selection criteria system will search for a license in system. Uh, so here in this case, the system is not finding any license, could not find any export import license. So you see a block here. So this is a product classification screen. Uh, so here you can see the product and the left side, you see the legal regulation uh, and the numbering schemes uh, and the classification period validity, which shows the validity and the uh, you see a number. Uh, below, if you see there's a no control checkbox. So in case if you don't want this legal control to be checked, you can uh, select this box and uh, legal control check will be skipped. So you're not a uh, product is not required to be controlled by license in that case. Above that, you're seeing two boxes, grouping and peculiarity code. So grouping is used to group and summarize products with the different control classes, so which requires same export management process. So here we can group uh, different control classes into one group. So which will reduce the workload for the import and export legal control uh, and uh, even the license determination service. So system uses control groupings, which we assign to product in product master. And uh, we can use this to determine the license type. Okay, and uh, coming to peculiarity code is a unique identifier. It is assigned to the import export transaction to classify your products more precisely. The customs authorities usually they assign this peculiarity code to your import and export transactions to classify your products more precisely uh, so, so that they can easily identify your product or your special products. So you can assign this uh, peculiarity codes uh, to the products in product master and uh, create them as an attributes in your uh, export license or your agreements in license master. So this, uh, you're seeing the license, this is a license screen. Uh, the legal regulation is EAR, US license type is their IVL. And uh, the import export license is your internal license number, uh, which, which is automatically generated in SAP GTA system. External number is your license number, which you get from the department, whatever, whatever department you have the license. 
and the validity of the license valid from and to <clears throat> and uh, attributes with multiple values you're seeing uh, the first one will be the status with the different status active is the one uh, which we need to release the block license should be active and uh, below that values you can have attributes like values quantities materials country of destination uh, different attributes and we can have with multiple values or single value so here at the bottom if you see that so these attributes like fto fto is a company code control class is, uh, is your product classification number all these attributes are with single value so the license is applicable only to this particular company code and only to this particular product classification so only uh, these attributes have single value so this is the license determination strategy the license determination strategy is a combination of legal regulation, your geography, which can be your country or country group, uh, and your product classification, product data, ECCN, or you can have your control grouping here, and uh, your license type. <clears throat> so the system uh, will search for a license based on the license determination strategy. So even this license determination strategy, uh, you can, you can, um, Upload in SAP GTS as an XML file. Uh, if you have multiple determination strategy, can uh, can upload the XML file directly. So this flow shows the license determination flow. So legal regulation ER US uh, is picked from your plant, uh, which is legal unit in SAP GTS plant country. Uh, so legal, legal regulation ER US is picked and uh, country cn is your destination country that is your ship to party uh, country and this is cn from the product master and the license type so based on this combination for combination system will search for the license in sap gts and apply to the customs document so this screen uh, is for the manual assignment uh, system automatically picks a license if it's a, uh, there is an active license in system. In case if you want to override the automatic assignment, you can do it over here. You can see whatever available license in system and you can override the automatic assignment. And even um, uh, um, through config, we can, we can either have manual assignment or automatic assignment. It depends on our requirement. So this is a transaction for the recheck. Uh, you recheck the sales order and the block will be released after having the license, active license in system. So the block is released and it will show the license number. The customs document will show the legal control data. So what is the legal regulation? What is the license number? What is the value we have utilized uh, in this transaction? Uh, return, value return offers, uh, how much quantity or value got depreciated from your license. So these are the license attributes. Uh, based on these attributes, you can maintain the license. Um, based on FTO, FTO is your company code, legal unit is your plant, business partners, uh, country of departure, destination, document numbers, product number, ECCN, product classification, import code number, peculiarity code, country group, partner function. So based on these attributes, uh, we can maintain the license. So for this transaction, we have used attributes like values. Uh, so values with maximum value shows the license value. So uh, allocated value will show your depreciation amount and the balance value available in your license. Uh, similarly, quantity, the maximum quantity and the depreciated and the remaining quantity we can see. And the assigned document will show whatever transactions whatever sales order have utilized this particular license and how much value got written off so even we can uh, simulate the business transaction uh, by giving all the required entries in the particular transaction uh, in gts uh, so here the required uh, values are given logical system company code plant document type partner details item category value and quantity by giving all this, you can simulate a transaction. You can check whether um, there will be a block for your transaction. It can be prepared before creating a sales order. 
So we can create our own uh, report. Uh, standard reports are available in GTS uh, to <clears throat> see uh, the license status. And uh, we can have this uh, customized report to have our own required fields in the selection screen. And uh, even in the output screen, we can have our own fields showing here it is showing the sales order number, license uh, internal number, external number we can show and we can show the quantity value. So whatever we require, we can show in the customized report. So these are some of the common license types, uh, NLR, IVL, or common uh, for EAR export control law. Uh, when it comes to ITA, uh, we have DSP-5, we have uh, uh, manufacturer license agreement, we have technical assistance agreement. So all these license types are related to ITAR. So these are some of the common legal control blocks we see in uh, SAP GTS. So we'll, uh, we'll see a block in customs document and if the block is in legal control, uh, these are some of the common blocks. So license not maintained in SAP GTS. Uh, license got expired license value and quantity got exhausted and product is not classified license type and license determination strategy system could not find any uh, partner function numbering scheme license uh, legal regulation determination procedure this is some of the common legal control block so once we see the uh, message uh, in the log uh, we should know what to do in the system to resolve the block so coming to conclusion, uh, so SAP GTS is essential for today's modern business for a smooth international trade transaction. So it provides a seamless integration of SAP GTS with the existing SAP or non-SAP ERP platform, uh, which requires a minimum uh, setup and maintenance effort. Uh, it can address uh, all global trade related issues and it offers a global solution. Uh, it co covers the global trade requirements of most most of the countries. SPGTS is a one solution for most of the countries, and it's not a one country specific solution. So it can be compliant with the laws here. So uh, we can make sure uh, the company doesn't break any law, and you're uh, trapped into any penalties. So it provides the effective customs management. Uh, so in customs management. Uh, uh, we have self-filing here and broker filing here, uh, which enables the, uh, for, through self-filing, we can electronically exchange a customs document with the customs authorities, uh, which is effective customs management. And uh, through broker filing, whatever documents are required, you can print out of SAP GTS and uh, uh, give it to brokers for filing. Profitability management, we can take advantage of the tax suspension using inward output processing, and we can use uh, the concepts like a preferential trade agreement, bonded varrows, which are there in SAP GTS. Uh, by that, uh, we can reduce the cost and uh, the way you can increase your profit. Um, well, that's it from me. Thank you all for listening. Now I'll hand over to Rachel. I'll be happy to answer your questions now. Thank you, Saravana. Uh, it looks like we have a couple minutes here to answer some questions that have come in. Uh, the first question is, is it possible to manually create a customs compliant document, compliance document in GTS without reference to sales order or purchase order and delete a customs compliance document? Yeah, manually create custom and delete, right? Yeah, uh, yes, it is possible. Uh, we can create manually customs document, uh, which is customs compliance document, and we can delete also. Uh, but mostly uh, we have a simulation mode to do that. In case if you want to check your business transaction, you can use the simulation mode for that. Uh, because uh, manual creation is more applicable for your customs declaration, which is your export declaration or import declaration. But you can manually create that. That is uh, uh, possible. And for deleting, yeah, even that is possible. But that is not a standard process. Through enhancement, you can do that. Uh, we have done for one of our client uh, where they have some virtual sales order, 
and there was no difference between actual and say a virtual order. So all the orders get transferred to GTS and we added some custom field to identify a virtual order and later we deleted the customs document in GTS. So even that is possible. So both are po possible. Yes, Rachel. Okay. Do we have any, any other um, questions? Yes. Uh, second question states, I believe ECCN classification is for legal control and customs document in GTS is blocked for missing ECCN. Can we block the customs document for missing HTS classification? Yes, uh, so ECCN is for your licensing and HTS is for your uh, uh, duty calculation. Uh, so you, uh, you're asking uh, whether we can block the legal control if HTS classification is not done. Uh, which is not standard, but we can do that as a enhancement. Uh, through an enhancement, we can do. Uh, even this is possible. We have done for a client, and uh, if the product is not classified, uh, if it is not classified, say HTS classification is not done, then there will be a block in your compliance document itself. Uh, so, along with ECC and even the HTS check also will be performed in your customs compliance document. And uh, this HTS check also we can do only for the cross-border transaction because uh, I don't think this is required for your domestic transaction. Uh, HTS check, yeah, we can do that. It's possible. Okay, uh, another question that's come in. Uh, do we need to manually assign a license to a delivery if we have also manually assigned a license to a sales order? So if you assign a license, to your sales order manually, uh, let's say this depends on the configuration in GTS. So uh, how, how we have done the config based on that, you can either transfer the uh, license from your preceding document that is from your sales order to the delivery document automatically, which will be very uh, easy for you uh, and uh, it's recommended. In case if you have not done that config in uh, system, if you manually assigned a, a license in sales order, then you have to manually assign the license in delivery also. So it depends on the configuration. Any other questions, Rachel? Okay, um, thank you, Saravana. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. If we didn't get to your question, we'll be sure to follow up with you after the webinar. Uh, we'll also be sending out the, the slides to everyone the next couple of days, so please keep an eye out for those. Um, thank you everyone for joining and we will see you next time.